It's absolutely lovely to see you all here uh, this afternoon. My name is Peter, and we're the children's and youth minister here. If you've not met me, it's lovely to see you. We'll be meeting for about 40, 45 minutes or so. We'll be staying all in the service together, and uh, it's the summer holidays, a chance for our, our kids' leaders to have a well deserved break. But if any particular little ones need a bit of uh, space to close some toys, there are some out in the corridor. But just use those as you need to. I'm very happy with a bit of noise, it's not going to put me off at all. So let's, let's enjoy spending some time together and there's tea and coffee after the service. So do stick around and get to uh, chat with one another there. Why don't we start this afternoon by saying together some words from Psalm, Psalm 33. I'll read the words in light, we all join in with the words involved. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with a harp. Make music to him on the tenth of Sing to him a new song. Play silver and shout for joy. Well, we don't have a tenth string line, but we can still sing and make music to the Lord. And we're going to stand and sing some wonderful truths about the God who it is that we worship. So let's stand and sing some music.
the, the verses there, it's that holy, it's, his name, holy is God. And that means perfect and clean and different to us because we are not very clean. We are not very holy. We, we mess up. We think the wrong things. We say the wrong things. We do the wrong things. We love the wrong things. And we're going to take just a moment to say sorry to God now. There's some words there on the screen. Let's just take just 20 seconds just to think about maybe some of the ways this morning, this afternoon on the way to church, that we've, we've sinned against God the way that we know we've not lived the way that He wants us to. And let's say sorry to Him for those things. So let's join together in the words on the screen. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We've done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the wonderful thing is God promises that that's true. That he will restore us. We can be friends with him again even though we've mucked up, and we'll continue to muck up every single day. We're going to continue now in prayer, and Julian is going to come and lead us in a time of prayer. Julian, 
We are going to sing again now. We've been praying to God, and now we're going to sing to Him, reminding that Jesus is the King. Now, this song has got actions, so follow me for the actions. Do stand up and let's sing.
What's that you did for one of the least of my brothers or sisters, mine, you did for me? Then he will say to those ones that, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They, will, they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brilliant. Thanks. You too. Okay. As I said, we've been looking through the Apostles' Creed, haven't we? It's that summary for thousands of years about what Christians believe, squeezing all the great truths of the Bible into just a few sentences. And we're going to read it together, again as we have for most weeks during this series. So let's have a read of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, Forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. Okay, so we're going to be thinking about that little sentence right at the bottom of the screen there, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. But as we start today, I wonder if we can have a think about consequences. Now, I have got on my board here some possible consequences. You might have to pay a fine and be banned from driving. You might get ice cream for pudding. You might get a well done sticker from your teacher. You might get turned into a jelly baby. Or you get sent off for the rest of the match. Now, well, can I have four volunteers? Come on, four of you. Come on, Ian, come on. Come on, come on, come on Jacob, come on, Rupert. Um, uh, come on, me. And it might be a little bit. Just, you can come stand with me. You can stand with me. That's not a good one. Now, Eva, if you practice really hard, and learn all of your spellings, which one of those do you think might happen to you? Do you think you'll get turned into a jelly baby? Do you think you'll get banned from driving? Do you think you might get a sticker from a teacher? You, even if you've got all your spellings right, do you not think you'll get a sticker from your teacher? Or you, <laughs> <laughs> you might get ice cream from your neighbor. But what about do you think your teacher might give you a sticker? Give you a big table or a book? Why don't you hold that one? And Annie, why don't you hold that one for me? Really? Do you want to go stand over just by the other side of the board? Brilliant. Okay, me. What about if you eat up everything on your plate for dinner? Which of those consequences do you think will be yours? You might have less people putting. Will you hold that one? You've got two hands, so you can hold two of those. Okay. Now, Jacob, what happens if you make a bad tackle in a rugby match and hit someone on the head? You probably would get sent off. Yep, yeah, okay, you can hold that one. And you can hold that one. Now, it's going to be a close one thing. Are you going to get turned into a jelly baby or bad from driving? If you drive too fast and get caught by a speed camera, what do you think the consequences are going to be? I think you get fined. I think you probably will get fined. I don't think there's anything at the end that you get turned into a jelly baby. Thanks, guys. Go and take a seat down. Really, you can leave 10 minutes with you if you want. Consequences. You can have good consequences, like ice cream for pudding, a big sticker from your teacher, or you can have bad consequences. Sent off, don't get to play the game, banned from driving, possibly. Okay, well, as I said, this week we were thinking about that line in the Apostles' Creed, he'll come to judge the living and the dead. Last week we saw that Jesus is in heaven now, and he's the king on the throne, and he's ready to come back. Okay? And we're going to think the consequences matter. The consequences of how we live now matter. 
because one day Jesus is going to come back and judge everyone, and we will all face the consequences for how we've lived. Jesus is going to judge everyone, and we will all face the consequences for how we've lived. Now, some of those situations were a little bit silly, but we saw from our passage that, that Rupert and Monty Medford that there are two really serious scenarios and consequences. One option is that we love Jesus and his people. And the consequence of that is that we will have life forever with God. But there is another consequence, another option, that we ignore God and his people. And the consequence of living that way is punishment and suffering forever and ever. So two really big consequences and big choices. Okay. Now let's have a little look in the Bible and see where, where I got those two ideas from. If you, could, if you close your Bible, just turn them back to page 995. And we're going to have a look at a few verses that will just help us understand these two options. Okay, so the verses, right at the number, number 31, right down at the bottom, underneath the words that say the sheep and the goats, show us that Jesus is going to judge everyone. Now, Jesus is going to be speaking to a big crowd of people, and he calls himself the Son of Man. And that's a special name from the Old Testament that talks about how Jesus is full of power and authority. And he says he is going to come in glory, and he will sit on his glorious throne. And every nation, every, every single human being that's ever lived on the planet is going to be there in front of him. And we're all going to see him. How amazing he is. This is going to be one massive wow moment. The biggest wow moment in the history of the whole world. Everyone's going to see Jesus in all of his amazing godness. What's Jesus going to do? He's going to Judges. He's going to judge us. Now, we might not like that, that word, judge. But judges care about right and wrong. And I think we all really care about right and wrong. We sort of know that from, from the very end of the stage. So if I came down and went, uh, let's see, look, I'm going to make that pen. And I'm going to take a piece of paper. If I look at any point of view on, what would you say to me if I did that? I'm just getting a look that says, that's not fair. That's not fair. What about when we're watching the football? And we yell at the TV, and yell at the ref, and we go, that's not fair, he's fouled it. It's not fair. Well, why do we want criminals to be punished when they do wrong things? It's not fair. We care about right and wrong. And we care about right and wrong because God cares about right and wrong. And he cares about right and wrong a bazillion more times than we could ever care about right and wrong. Because he's the only perfect one in the whole wide world, he gets to decide what is right and what is wrong. He will judge us and put us into one of these two groups. He will see how we live and decide we're going either that group or this group. And Jesus talks about separating sheep from goats. In Jesus' day, the farmers used to actually have to do that. The goats used to get somewhere a bit warmer at night to sleep, and the sheep were fine outside. So the farmer would literally separate the sheep from the goats. Now, I thought we'd have a go. I've got some pictures of either sheep or goats on the screen. And if it's a sheep, I want you all to give your best sheep noise. I want you to give your best bang. And so I practice with the sheep of you as you go. Bang. And if the goat appears, I'll need to stamp your feet. Imagine, I'm not going to do anything more like a head, but, but imagine your goat's head goes, let's do a stamp off it. So if the goat appears, we go. Okay, so we need to look at the screen and see if you think we've got a sheep. We go bang. If it's a goat, we stamp our feet. Okay. So what do we think? Well, I'm hearing lots of bars. Yep, yeah, I'll put the sheep on the right hand side. What have we got on the screen now? Uh, yep, yeah, another sheep. I'll put it over onto the right. Oh, what about this one? Oh, yeah, our goat's there. What about this one? And uh, yeah, another sheep, really impressive horns on that sheep. What about this one? Oh, yeah, most of them are thinking goats. Yeah, goats. Oh, oh, we've got a bit of a. We've got a 
sure that the movement is sure it's a goat. I can't remember which way this one goes. Let's see if we go left or right. Google told me it was a goat. Okay, what about this one on the screen? Uh, sheep. And uh, lastly, yes, a very impressive long ear. Okay, so we separated the sheep from the goats. We've got our sheep on the right hand side and our goats on the left. As I say, remember, Jesus was using this as a picture to talk about what's going to happen for real people. Now I know this is my right, and this is my left, so it's the right way around for me. But Jesus is going to put people into two categories. You've got the people who love Jesus and his people, the church, and people who ignore Jesus and his people, the church. And there are serious consequences. Because when Jesus comes, there's only going to be these two groups. There's no kind of sitting in the middle. There's no bit of that, bit of the other. We're all in either one camp or the other. Jesus will judge us. And there's consequences. If we love Jesus and his people, then we will enjoy life with God forever and ever. If we ignore Jesus and his people, then we will suffer punishment. And ever. And this is serious. This is, this is heavy stuff. And we know this because Jesus keeps his promise. All throughout the Bible, we see that Jesus is a person who keeps his promises. And he's promised us that this is going to happen one day. He will decide whether we go this way or that way so we can be sure that it's going to happen. And Jesus, you know, he doesn't make us guess, you know, who's in which group. He knows. And he tells us how he's going to decide. I don't know if you notice when Rupert and Monty were reading, you know, they were talking about caring for people who are hungry and thirsty and lonely and needing clothes and being ill. But Jesus wasn't, I don't think, talking about absolutely everyone. He seems particularly bothered about how we treat God's people, how we treat other Christians. Have a look at verse 40, look at number 40, halfway down that second column on the page. Jesus is talking, he says, the king, that's Jesus, will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. You see, Jesus is saying that if we really do truly love Jesus, then it's going to flow out in the way that we love and care for God's people. God's people, Christians, are like Jesus' little brothers and sisters. Now, if you've got a brother or sister, have a think about some of the ways that, maybe deep down, you really do love them. They may get on your nerves at times, but you really do love your brother or your sister. And Jesus is saying, if we love one another as brothers and sisters, that will show that we really love him. Because Jesus, remember, Jesus is in heaven. So we can't actually go and give him a bit of bread or a drink. Or, or invite him out to our house. But we can do that for other Christians, so his brothers and sisters. Do you see, what matters most for deciding where we spend forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and ever, and ever is whether we love Jesus or not. And how do we know that? Well, if we trust that Jesus died to swap places with us, take away our sin, whether we're living with him as the King and Lord of all our lives, that what, that's what matters. How do we know if that's the case? Well, it will show in the way that we love one another in church by loving his people. So how do we care for people in our church family who, you know, who are feeling lonely? Or what about when we support people overseas, our mission partners, uh, with money? Or when we stand up for, for Christians who are being beaten up uh, for, for believing in Jesus? That's a way that we show that we really are loving Jesus and his people. It might feel quite small. It might not look really special and amazing. Remember that the righteous people in verse 37, you know, they didn't, they didn't even realise they were doing anything special. But Jesus sees. Jesus knows our hearts. And he promises us that if we're loving him, living his way, then we can be confident that we will get to enjoy forever and ever. And ever and ever and ever. And ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever, and ever with him. So if we do love 
love Jesus, then that should motivate us to really care for our church family really well. Remember, they are Jesus' little brothers and sisters. Okay? So that's one group. And we've seen that Jesus is coming and judging put us into one of these two groups. Now, as soon as you have two groups, you're always going to have something that's going to be really good for some people and really bad for others. Now, if I said, if there was a rule somehow that we woke up one day and the only thing we could eat was apples, that would be great if you liked apples. But it would be terrible if you didn't like apples, wouldn't it? That's the only thing you could eat for the rest of your life. Great if you like apples, terrible if you don't. Or what about if there was a rule that the only pet you could have was a pet dog, which is the only toy dog I could find in my collection? That would be fine if you loved dogs. But if you don't love dogs, or maybe you're allergic to dogs, or a bit scared of dogs, that would be a terrible thing, wouldn't it? There's only two camps, only two options. It would be great for some, and terrible for others. Now, those are silly examples. But Jesus coming back and judging isn't a silly example. That really will. And it will be great if you're over this side. But it's really not good news if you're over this side. It's bad news for those who ignore Jesus and his people. This is challenging when you think about it. I don't know, maybe you wouldn't call yourself a Christian and you think, well, that's me. I want these people to ignore what Jesus and his people. Well, investigate it. Come and speak to a Christian. You need to get to know this. Jesus, it's going to matter because one day we're going to stand in front of him as our judge. And it's a terrible consequence if we end up spending eternity forever and ever and ever and ever separated from God. The thing is, we will all know people who are over this side friends and family who don't love Jesus. Let's be praying for them. There are serious consequences. They're going to last forever. <clears throat> Only God can change their hearts and bring them to know about Jesus and his people. So would we remember this future judgment that Jesus is going to come and bring? And would that cause us to pray? Pray for them more and more. And take opportunities to talk to them about how amazing Jesus is so that they return and love Jesus and love his people. So just as we finish, Jesus is really coming back. We don't know where, but we know he is, and that's where all of history is headed. Jesus is going to judge us and will face the consequences for how we treat Jesus and his people. It matters. The challenge of the full of us, however old or young we are, is how are we going to make Jesus and his people priority in, in our lives. This is going to have consequences for the rest of time. That's, those are some big things, I know. So why don't we spend a couple of minutes, if you, those with families, if you've got the sheets as you came in, just to chat a little bit about what we've heard today. And if you've not got um, kids with you, there's a couple of questions I think you can read on the screen. Maybe to have a think about it yourself, or we'll chat about with those around you. And let's just take a couple of minutes just to, to let some of the big truths we've been thinking about this afternoon sink in, and then we will see in just a couple of minutes, but I'll, I'll invite them to this stuff. Let's just have a couple of minutes just to chew over what we've been hearing about today.
um, today. But I know you probably did, didn't have time to um, finish those sheets, but do take them home with you. Do continue thinking about some of these things. Now, we are going to learn a new song together that reminds us that if we are trusting Jesus, it is going to be wonderful when Jesus does come back to earth one day as church. And I'm going to hand this over to Vic as we learn a new song. Thanks so much, Tim. And it's a great truth in this song about the confidence we can have when Christ appears if we're trusting in him. Um, so what we'll do is we will sing, um, I'll sing the line, you sing it back, stay sat down just for a minute, and we'll learn it really well. And then when the whole congregation comes back after the summer, you can show them how anything sing Okay, so okay. So this is the first time. I sing it, you sing it back. When Christ alive appears, all will be complete your turn.
we're coming to the end of our service. But just to let you know, the doors will be locked at the back so that um, little ones can't escape. So do head out that way. There's be tea and coffee and biscuits through the hall. Uh, so do stick around for those and get to just chat with one another. But why don't I, I pray just as we... Oh, no, two notices before I pray and finish. Um, it's not too late to be signing up for our getaway in three weeks' time. We'll be having a weekend away over at St Catharines in Palmore. It's not too late to sign up. If you haven't already, please do. And if you do it as soon as possible, that would help Debbie and the rest of the planning team and all of us concerned. So do um, please be signing up for that. And remember that next week we have a picnic bit for, before the church service, that is like 21st, 1 pm down at the bandstand. So do a picnic lunch all together, just a chance over the summer uh, to enjoy spending some time with one another. Why don't I pray as we close? Father God, thank you that. If we're trusting in you, when Jesus returns to, to judge the living and the dead, that is going to be a wonderful day. We'll behold the glory of our King forever, and our faith will turn to sight, and we will see you for, for, for as you are. And with that, it spurs on and encourages us to live wholeheartedly loving you and your people this week. But with that truth that you are coming, that Christ is coming to, to judge the living and the dead, be a motivation for us to, to love our friends who don't know you, who are ignoring Christ and his people. We will be praying for them that the consequences are eternal and they are serious. So please would we be motivated by that this week. And so may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.